So, so she really understands the chemistry yeah. of people. So yeah, she, she, she does. <laughs> Wouldn't have even imagined that hmm. I would become a teacher. Hmm. Like, okay, my younger self would be shocked. <laughs> I'm currently working with CMR University as uh, the design thinking lead there and this is something that uh, CMR has been you know it's 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 a unique offering compared to other universities mm-hmm. and uh, this just started a couple of years ago and what I do is I get students to think innovatively nice. um, to nice. problem solve and to come up with um, ideas mm-hmm. for in in any field that they're in whether they're doing engineering or mm-hmm. architecture or oh, law lovely. they all go through my course mm. Mm. Okay so that's uh, that's just a little bit about what I'm doing currently with CMR. Mm. Um I think one thing that might be interesting is just like my overall uh, work trajectory mm-hmm. of finding my path and my purpose. So I studied architecture, worked mm. as an architect for a bit mm-hmm. and then I did the Teach for India fellowship. So I worked in a government school as a full-time teacher uh, for 2 years. I, uh, I was in Chennai. I taught kids from the fishing community there. Uh, and that's where I was introduced to design thinking and I got super interested in design thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, moved to Canada, did my post graduation in uh, interdisciplinary design strategy. And uh, yeah, I was there for a bit and then I came back here and I've worked with um a design and innovation firm and then i've now joined uh, cmr so Incredible. that's like a little bit about my trajectory and everything's <laughs> a bit of a squiggle like you usually yeah, think yeah. like life's a straight line but Absolutely. it's more of a squiggle but if you take so, that, what what i can say is if you take that squiggle and if you put it on a canvas and you put it in an art museum you could sell it for a million bucks because it just goes and it looks like a modern piece of art yeah but that's incredible you said that you started out in architecture Yeah. So what was that like? What was the what made you want to go into architecture initially? Was that always the dream? Was that the initial dream, so to speak? Architecture was something that I decided when I was in 12th grade, I towards okay. the end of 12th grade actually. <laughs> okay. Uh okay. it was very very late that I decided hmm. on architecture, but it was more to do with uh, what my chemistry teacher told me. Okay. So, uh she's someone who I think has great perception she can totally read people in mm. a way that i've not seen anyone read people before mm. <laughs> um she she can easily identify anybody's strengths mm. what they might be good at what uh, you know what's going on in their head she really gets an idea of that incredible so so she really understands the chemistry yeah. of people so yeah, she, she, <laughs> she does she does that's great and uh, yeah so she was the one who um, you know who spoke to me who said mm. hey vindya have you considered uh, architecture hmm. she said hmm. i think you have a great uh, sense of 3d visualization and uh, you have a great sense of design and i think maybe architecture might be something that might be up your lane why don't you check it out were you intricate with your diagrams in the chemistry class or something like that which Not is what really. she said no <laughs> <laughs> it was mainly because i think in one of my chemistry classes i helped her explain some atomic structure hmm. Uh, okay. by referring to the building itself i hmm. was like okay, if this atom is in this room and hmm. then that atom is over there then this is how fair. this would work fair 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 you know Understood. and then she okay. was like whoa that was <laughs> because she she wasn't able to clearly explain it to the class and she's like if anybody else can find explain a, this find an example find a find a way to explain this yeah. that'll be better awesome so then i ended up doing that and then she uh, yeah great so, nah. so yeah after yeah. Uh, so what was architecture like for you considering that you got into it you were there for a couple of years did you were you happy with it or i loved architecture okay studying architecture was uh, beautiful because you you go through 5 years mm-hmm. of um, you know exercising your brain in so many different ways you learn about so many things there's uh, you learn about design you learn about structure you learn mm-hmm. about history you learn about theory mm-hmm. um you get interesting problems that you uh, problems as in like you get interesting projects yep. uh, that you need to think through and work on like mm. in my third semester one of my projects was to design a home for a sculptor and and an artist oh wild so then i wild <laughs> yeah it was it was beautiful and in that process i ended up uh, you know meeting um, meeting this amazing artist uh, and sculptor his name is yusuf arakal he's no okay. more okay uh, but he's done some of the really amazing scu- sculptures that you see around bangalore mm. um, his sculptures are there on mg road mm. at the airport and in different places i, see. I didn't okay. even know okay. that he was uh, you know such a, a big Prominent deal figure, yeah. until i went to his house mm. uh, because my uh another architect connected me to him <laughs> and then i was like oh my god wow 
and then i just got to just like how you know we are having this podcast now i mm. got to spend a good amount of time just picking his brain and understanding how he works and what spaces he feels um you know help him the most when it comes to uh, sculpting and uh, yeah and art so things like that so there was there was that then there are multiple projects mm. uh, we designed a bus terminal i designed uh, we have a final thesis you have so many things mm. so you just keep exercising your brain on how do you think about a project how do you think about it from all different angles how mm. do you think about it in terms of structure in terms of people in terms of flow mm. in mm. terms of um, spaces in yeah. terms of you know closed spaces open spaces um then later on working as an architect is very different from what it's like to study architecture mm. <laughs> because when you work as an architect you have to there's a lot of hard work in both absolutely yeah. even in my university right now mm-hmm. i hear this even from the hostel warden <laughs> that uh, the architecture students are mm-hmm. the ones who are like working super hard uh, I see. I because see. we have like so many submissions so yeah. many projects and yeah. and i'm uh, assuming that your assignments and everything just because i'm coming from a bba background and okay. um, um I, i i wish i had a lot more practical exposure or practical assignments but mm-hmm. there was a lot more theory but i'm assuming huh. it would have been the the opposite for you or was it the same I wish even we had a little more practical exposure but okay. uh, there is a lot of uh, more than theory it's about applying your mind okay. uh, applying your mind to think through how to design uh, a space Fair. so that's Fair. that's what you do through um, you know through those 5 years understood so yeah. explain that trajectory from moving from architecture to creating structures to putting yourself in situation we are dealing with a whole bunch of different kinds of problems new problems you know innovative thinking problems what made you want to change from that to i want to help develop society i want to help develop you know um the future of the nation and provide education what was that switch for you so what ended up happening was um when i was studying architecture i went for a fest in iim hmm. i think it was called unmad hmm. and uh that's when teach for india was uh was was launching okay. in india okay and uh, they started to come to the iims and to the iits and uh, they were talking about you know what that fellowship is about hmm. so teach for india is a two year fellowship hmm. where they get young graduates to um, work in a low income school or a government school mm-hmm. for 2 years mm-hmm. and uh, this is so that they can see how you can impact change uh, not just for the kids in the class but the school as a whole and also get a good understanding of the community as well amazing so amazing. you understand the grassroots of what's really going on in education hmm. and the idea is that anybody who does the fellowship uh, would then grow as leaders and um, be in the education space in some way mm-hmm. impacting change in uh in whatever sector that they are interested in incredible like if you want to get into policy you want to get into um anything else you mm-hmm. you're free to do so and it's just about giving you that exposure to the ground realities i see I and see. um it's a it's a really fantastic program mm. and uh, i learned so much it's also really challenging to yeah, go exactly. through that fellowship so yeah. to that point to it being challenging how long did it take you to come to the decision of saying you know what i'm going to do this because you mm-hmm. had a lot to compare to you had a lot to take into consideration yeah so how 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 did you come to that conclusion how did you come to that decision i met someone who was doing the fellowship okay and uh, i just ran into him at a cafe and uh, he said he was doing the fellowship i'd already heard about it back at hmm. the fest and i thought it was a fantastic idea and this was just a random meet yeah this was just nice. a chance okay. meet okay. you know okay. it was nice. just a chance meet hmm. and then and at that point i was also looking to do work that had um positive social impact in some way nice. okay. and a uh, work where i could interact with people hmm. a little more um as an architect i was mainly at my desk working on my system working on working drawings and hmm. Hmm. all of that for long hours and uh, everyone around me said hey vindya you don't belong here you should be with people because i would just like burst during the lunch time <laughs> and uh, i would talk to everyone and it would just uh, they they just felt like you know i was i was There's not in the right place mismatch. yeah fair, fair. so then I even i felt it and uh, and then i just wanted to do work that uh, that in some way aligned with who i am and teach for india was a two year fellowship i when i started doing the fellowship when i decided to take on the fellowship i didn't 
think of uh, completely changing my career path hmm. mm-hmm. i took it on thinking okay it's a two year fellowship hmm. at that you point know? you would have been thinking maybe i can teach architecture in the future or something like that i'm assuming or maybe. Some, something i was like i i didn't even think i wouldn't have even imagined that hmm. i would become a teacher hmm. like okay my younger self would be shocked <laughs> they would be like what i would be like how you yeah, know yeah. so uh, but it's just something that uh, i found exciting at that point hmm. and just applied for it mm-hmm. and there's a there's a big process mm-hmm. um before you can get into the fellowship Understood. so Understood. then i made it mm-hmm. and uh, and then i got the letter and the same day that i got the letter i also got a call from one of the architects i'd worked with previously huh. where i'd done my internship huh. he called me and he said vindhya are you you know are you looking free <laughs> are you looking for a job we need you you know Yeah, and yeah. and i'm and i've got this letter and i've got that call from mm-hmm. him at the same time <laughs> that would have been a difficult it yeah, was like oh but, what do i do now <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then i told him that hey i've applied for this and i've got this letter and yeah. i'm thinking of uh, doing this fellowship i'm going to be a teacher in a <laughs> government school for two he was like vindhya are you sure <laughs> vindhya architects <laughs> oh <my laughs> he's God. like the architecture community needs you yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> because i was overly into intern exactly, yeah, doing yeah. a whole bunch of things in the office yeah. and, and stuff uh, if you don't mind me asking uh, how many years of experience did you have in architecture at this point in your career um i'd say close to 2 years 1 and a half to 2 years of architecture experience nice. but i did intern um throughout my um you know throughout my degree okay. so okay. i interned during every summer break Nice, nice. Okay. So there's uh, two things that we need to know when you're in college and when you're like trying to figure out, uh, you know, what to do next. Yeah. Uh, one is a good understanding of yourself, uh, of who you are, what are your strengths, what drives you, mm-hmm. all of that. That takes a while to figure out. Of course. And uh, two is also what are the kind of opportunities out there, <laughs> because we're usually kind of boxed into. uh only what we hear around us yeah. and the people around us are usually parents uncles aunts uh friends some relatives who are more familiar with the kind of uh jobs and the kind of things that are happening that that are that have been there for a little longer right yeah yeah and um, right now things are changing so rapidly that there are so many amazing new opportunities mm-hmm. uh and new kinds of jobs that uh, we can do even what you are doing right now uh Absolutely. is not something that really existed yeah, it, it uh, a little didn't. while ago <laughs> it didn't it didn't really right didn't. Yeah. yeah it probably did in a different form maybe uh back with radio and uh, like you know of course things like that like news that. channels yeah, and things yeah. but for anyone to uh to be able to just immediately start a youtube channel on their own yeah, yeah. start something and then you know build that up and it's, uh, it's, it's, make it's it something incredible. else it's so it's absolutely incredible it yeah. is yeah so there's a lot of amazing changes that are happening and uh, and amazing opportunities hmm. and if students also discover what their own strength is they can match that with what they could do next hmm. with opportunities that are uh, out there and up and coming for sure yeah to that point to that point of discover yourself help um, you know make sure you find out who you are at what point in that journey of finding yourself did you realize that you know what this is probably where i see my life going and this is how i want to plan my life from here on out so even right now hmm. i probably wouldn't be able to tell you what i'm going to be doing 5 years down the line hmm. uh i it's all like it's it's all uh it's it's still a journey it's still a process the only thing that i trust right now is uh i trust my instinct i trust my gut i i trust my i'm i'm i've i'm in a much better place in, in terms of uh knowing myself knowing my strengths and things compared to where i was uh, back in my early 20s Fair. um and uh, i would say that uh, it's kind of like if you're driving and you've got your headlights on mm-hmm. and you see the next 10 20 meters Fair. and you okay. just trust the road mm-hmm. that the road is going to be there mm-hmm. you just know that like you know immediately for the next little bit it's this sorted. things are yeah. things are sorted things are clear yeah right mm-hmm. and um and on a higher level i think knowing your purpose a little bit m- more and knowing your strengths a little bit more mm-hmm. uh and knowing that you are doing work that aligns with with these things Understood. uh that would uh, that would help 
because Please. the medium could change actually yeah the, yeah the medium of how you would do it like i would say that uh, everything i studied in architecture is still being uh, is still super useful for me right now hmm. because i learned how to think like a designer i learned how to understand problems understand what's going on understand requirements and do do some research mm-hmm. and then come up with solutions so that same principle is what i'm applying in design thinking Incredible. and it's what i loved about architecture Incredible. i loved the early mm-hmm. you know when you just start off mm-hmm. i just loved you know say interviewing that sculptor for example and trying to understand you know what other people's lives are like and mm. what are their requirements what are their needs Correct. and how do, how do i design for them mm. so that was the part that i loved and i'm glad i'm able to like continue to take that forward that's incredible and uh, i think you slowly discover these things and everything just adds up mm. um all your previous experiences of whatever you do it all just adds up and then uh, i think just just some things will just appear in front of you and it will just Uh, feel right and make sense nice and that's just how my life has been so mm-hmm. far not necessary that everyone else has uh, the same kind of experience but for now i'm i'm very uh, i'm very happy with the way things have been it's kind of like what uh, steve jobs says about like you know looking back and seeing the dots connect correct correct it's kind of like that nice yeah. nice what is so learn to trust your gut i would say it, if if if, mm-hmm. if you had to summarize it would it be a more of a gut thing or would it be more of like introspection and sitting with yourself type or just be like you know what this is the path i want i mm-hmm. trust this i'm going to move with that yeah there's there's a little bit of all of that mm-hmm. there is uh there is trusting your gut there's also guidance mm-hmm. um like my chemistry teacher correct yeah. like uh you know like something that just kind of comes your way uh, and then you listen to it and then you look into it um there was a lot of research also that was involved before i uh, you know took the path that i ended up taking sure. i i spoke to a lot of people mm-hmm. i initially thought i'll do my masters in architecture mm-hmm. i went to sept in amdabad i spent like a week talking to all the professors there mm-hmm. um uh, trying that, to figure out that would have uh, been a great you know, experience yeah yeah it was huh. very interesting i i figured out that none of these courses are for me that that was the great finding mm-hmm. so sometimes learning what is not for you is a better is fantastic learning. yeah absolutely. because um, just just understanding that hey do i really want to completely specialize in uh, town planning or city planning or mm-hmm. landscape and then i just wasn't feeling it i mm. just felt like hey i'm not sure if i want to do this is it you know making me fo- focus too much on something i was more of a uh, a person who wanted to um be more of a generalist rather than a, a, a specialist so it didn't really fit into uh you know my mm. being Fair. and then yeah and then i think just just talking to lots of people talking to people who are in uh f- different kinds of fields that you are interested in who are doing things that you might want to do a couple of years down the line mm. that is uh, super useful in trying to get a direction trying nice. to figure out you know where you want to be and what you want to do nice nice what is design thinking is it for me for a, for for someone as an outsider looking at it mm-hmm. i see it as conceptualization you know okay. if i had to stereotype it like that but is it what more to it am i missing okay yeah so uh design thinking is uh essentially it's about problem solving okay okay and it's about it's just about being able to think the way a designer thinks hmm. to solve any kind of problem all right so i'll give you an example so um the way a designer would think about anything mm-hmm. is they would first do a little bit of research to understand um say if we're looking at a product hmm. um and say we're looking at a backpack right so a designer would first try to understand what are the kind of things that uh, people are carrying in their backpacks today hmm. and uh what's what's useful what's missing maybe they're observing people in colleges maybe they're observing people um you know at, at the metro station mm. or in railway stations just observing how people are using uh backpack. that particular products mm. product mm. like a backpack right and then you start to discover that hey actually this particular thing that we have in backpacks today mm. is not very useful or this is a little uncomfortable maybe this could be slightly better okay. you start 
you start identifying uh, areas uh, of that could be of improvement okay. exactly mm -hmm. and uh, and then after that you come up with a whole bunch of ideas of how you can make that happen sure. how you can make these changes and then you prototype and then you you know test it out awesome so awesome. that's what a, that's the process that a designer would go through so whether you're an architect or mm. a product designer or a service designer mm. you are going through this process of deeply understanding problems mm. and identifying what needs to be changed or mm. what is not working okay. and then coming up with uh, you know many ideas and uh, and then maybe taking on one idea and prototyping it and testing it out amazing so that's how designers work so applying the same way that a designer works mm. into to to like regular problems mm. that mm -hmm. people are generally facing maybe it could be problems um, in the social sector, for example, say you're looking at uh, education mm. and you're looking at why are kids in government schools uh, not getting the not getting an excellent education. Correct. You can apply the same process yeah. of yeah. conducting research, understanding the root causes. Mm. Um, so when I did this, when I first learned about design thinking and it was it was really wonderful because it, this was a process I was so familiar with in the architecture world. Mm. And now I was in, uh, I was, I was, I was teacher. I was teaching, mm. and then I learned about the design thinking process, and mm. I was like, yeah, this is this is the natural it, it, process. Yeah. And then uh, seeing how that can be implemented to to understand, hey, why are why are the kids in my class, um, you know, say not as energetic in the morning? Maybe mm. something's going on, and uh, why is why is this happening? Why is that happening? So you you just the you just start with doing some research, understanding. Uh, if they've had breakfast, understanding mm. what's their family background, mm. is everything okay? And then you slowly discover all these different areas uh, which are not working. I so see. maybe the kids are not having breakfast. Maybe mm. the kids are, um, you know, maybe their their parents just fought recently, or uh, mm. something is happening at home. Uh, and there could be multiple reasons why a kid is not able to be completely present in class. So then after you identify the problem and then you look at how do you rectify it yeah how do you mm. solve that problem okay so okay. essentially that's what design thinking is and it can be applied absolutely anywhere you, it can be applied if you are a lawyer if you're mm. an architect if you're a lawyer looking at uh, you know how can we mm. help people mm. access mm. law better how can we work on different types of policies mm. how can we um, how can we get into law and tech and uh, you know mm. uh, do a whole bunch of things you can there's, there's the possibilities are endless absolutely when it yeah. comes to uh, being able to problem solve being able to innovate mm -hmm. in absolutely every field I see I, I, I yeah there's some sort of a juxtaposition that I can see over here mm -hmm. where you've gone from a field of architecture which is so technical which is so you know calculated so and it has to be factually accurate across across the board for for a lot of things yeah. and you've taken and now you're in something that is almost psychological if I think about it because it has mm -hmm. a lot to do with the mind it has a lot to do about the people has a lot to do about you know the the, mm -hmm. the, the psychology of the business and the people involved mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm very fascinated by that I'm very very fascinated by that and I'd, I'd, I'd like you to expand on that more because it's a change in a complete change in mindset from what I can see yeah you know because I'm, I'm not to, not to diss on a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset, but mm -hmm. if you're in architecture, then I would say that it's a fixed mindset because the end goal is architecture. But mm -hmm. over here, mm -hmm. with the growth mindset and with design thinking, there's just the possibilities are endless, which mm -hmm. is which is crazy, which is crazy. And I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to get <laughs> to that point in my journey, and I'm curious to know what it's going to be like. But it's inspiring to sit here with someone who's gone through that journey. So. Where is design thinking now with you and what are you doing with it at CMR2 University? Design thinking right now with CMR University is, I would like to first start with the vision of CMR University. Absolutely. Which Absolutely. is uh, to nurture creative thinkers who will drive positive global change. Okay. Um, and I completely resonate with that vision because mm. I also believe it's my own personal vision itself mm. for myself. Mm. I, I think I also thrive when I am, you know, bringing out the creative best in others mm. and doing work that in some way drives positive global change. Love. So, um, and I think it's a really powerful uh, vision and it's one of the first things that really drew me towards the university. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so CMR University, uh, over the last couple of years, uh, two years ago, 
almost three years right now, uh, started an entire department hmm. called the Department of Common Core Curriculum. Okay. So, okay. Uh, the Department of Common Core Curriculum has curriculum that is uh, useful for students across all streams. Hmm. So, there are multiple verticals under this, uh, you know, department. So, we've got design thinking, mm. uh, we've got uh, communication skills, mm. uh, we've got oral and written communication that comes under communication Amazing. skills, there's soft skills, Amazing. there's Amazing. aptitude skills, mm. and um, there's there's so much more. There's, there's critical thinking. There yeah, these is, are all the uh, things that we were missing in college, actually. Yeah. Like, these are all those intermediaries that help you do so much better in business. And it's, it's awesome that it's there now. Yeah, Why? absolutely. Why? Financial literacy. There's so much, hmm. just hmm. all the things that you wish you would learnt yeah, in school or in college. <laughs> uh, so there's a whole department dedicated to, uh, you know, teaching kids these, uh, not kids, I would say students, hmm. um, all of these things. So that's what CMR uh, univers University believes in and that's what they started. And um, it's been really amazing because it's almost been kind of like uh, having a startup hmm. inside a university where Why? we are just like, you know, Figuring uh, things out. Figuring things out, putting together, uh, yeah, putting together, uh, getting clients as in we're putting to, it's a, it's a startup on developing curriculum <laughs> and implementing it for students in different streams <laughs> and how do you work with all the different schools <laughs> and uh, make it happen. I see. And how do you understand what students in different schools need? Understood. Say for example, we are uh, doing design thinking as a workshop and as a semester long program mm -hmm. and we're doing this for students in um, multiple streams different uh, disciplines and then we we understand that hey uh, maybe for the bba students hmm. it would work better as a week-long workshop sure, maybe sure. engineering okay. students who want to really focus on um, prototyping a little bit more hmm. and uh, do more things maybe Extended they can do it across. as a semester long course Understood. so Understood. all of that has been prototyped, hmm. tested, every batch that we do, we change something because we hmm. learn from the previous batches that we, uh, you know, that we conduct design thinking and then we, we keep changing uh, the curriculum. I see. I and see. Uh, we've even had, um, I think, I think just building that spirit of innovation hmm. Hmm. in the students, hmm. um, building that, just sparking that, uh, that thing in them that, hey, I can come up with amazing ideas. I can do anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I think that's a, that's a really wonderful feeling because I think that's something that we sometimes lose uh, sure. with our usual um, more traditional education system which tells us hey these are the questions exactly. and these are the right answers exactly, exactly. and yeah. Uh, yeah I think that's what's really wonderful about um, design thinking at CMR mm. is because it just helps students start thinking out of the box mm. um, something that they already have inside them it just kind of unleashes that yeah yeah and uh, yeah and and with that we, we've also started to have um, an annual competition uh, oh, for awesome. innovation awesome yeah. awesome so that's crazy. Uh, one thing I'm, I'm I'm curious to know. So with all of these new courses that you or all of these you know uh, these uh, can I call them connector courses? I feel like they're connector courses because they uh -huh. help you get connected to so much more in the corporate world. Uh, okay. Which one? Which one is the most popular? Which ones are students um, you know signing up for the most since okay. the entire initiation of this? Most of these courses are. Uh, mandatory okay. in terms of um, the, the courses like design thinking and mm. um, communication and aptitude and things the like that they're, 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 they're all yeah soft skills all are all mandatory courses okay. Okay. and in fact CMR is uh, one of is, is actually India's first university to make design thinking a mandatory course for students across all streams great so awesome. uh, apart from it being mandatory also we mm. we truly uh, you know we we see the kind of energy and the kind of uh, excitement that students have when mm. it comes to design thinking and we see how they're applying it uh, even outside of our classes I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm curious to get into it now like even, yeah. even at this point i wouldn't mind doing a degree on something like design thinking especially since it's so pervasive you mm -hmm. know um, all, all this time i just thought it was about conceptualization i thought design thinking was just okay i want my prototype to look like this and mm -hmm. that's what goes out and that's what i thought design thinking but this is such an eye-opener for me and mm -hmm. I'm grateful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it's the opposite of uh, this is how I want it to be. Hmm. It's hmm. it's more of uh, let me try this and then it completely changes course. Honestly. And uh, that's just the natural way that, hmm. you know, uh, that you go through that process. I see. And it's a lot of uh, it's about being comfortable. Mm -hmm. 
with not knowing what's going to happen in the end fair it's fair. just about being comfortable in ambiguity mm-hmm. and uh, just going with the flow and uh, and letting it letting it unfold fair enough fair enough yeah. now uh, with design thinking i just want to talk about a couple of the trends that are happening in today's world and mm-hmm. how these can be applied to design thinking mm-hmm. now i know a lot of gen ai tools and a lot of these artificial intelligence and no code low code tools are being incorporated in business yeah. amass but yeah. is there a way that is being incorporated in design thinking now is there a way that you're using it in design thinking yeah absolutely right. as in design thinking is a means to ensure that you are um your your whatever you are creating it makes sense so that mm. okay let me just uh let me just rephrase that sure so sure. in design thinking there are two main parts to the process okay. so the first part of the process is to see if you are designing the right thing hmm. before you design things right oh okay nice nice right? yeah, okay so what that means is when you are designing the right thing hmm. that means do you have a good understanding of what the problem is in the first hmm. place do you have a good understanding of what needs to be solved in the first place and once you understand that then you can start building hmm. and making the right thing yes. so there are so many kids in um in universities and colleges these days who are all working on their final year project and typically what ends up happening is mm. hey i know how to code i know how to make this let me make this and mm. let me just fi- fit it into some problem that already exists like you you yeah. make a solution and you try to see where what it can fit in is. yeah what the problem nice, is nice so, so reverse engineering it a little bit right? yeah reverse engineering so that 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 ends up happening quite a lot mm. so design thinking just makes you pause and really think through what is the real need okay you could build something super fancy hmm. Hmm. but if nobody is going to use it then you know there's no mismatch. point yeah. yeah you might use all of the latest no code tools and um you know a- all of that you could use anything and you could build something really fancy but in the end if people are not really using it there's no point there's no purpose to it okay yeah so design thinking helps bridge that gap Nice. In fact it hel- it's 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 where you start. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh you start with really understanding uh you know what is really needed and then you can use all of these tools to build it Understood. in the prototype phase or in the test phase. Understood. But so, I'm I'm, I'm yeah. looking at this as an industry that is pretty much human dominated right now and I think mm-hmm. it's it feels like there's a lot of brainstorm sessions that happen it feels like there's a lot mm-hmm. of uh, cross pollination of uh, um, of departments that would be happening over here is what i can see as well so how do you maintain these kind of relationships if you're working in design thinking how yeah. do you uh, communicate with someone in marketing in sales and how do you get mm-hmm. all everyone to be aligned how does that work for you so for me when we are looking at cross pollination we really believe in cross pollination in the university okay we're looking at students from um different departments working together we want our design students to work with our engineering students to work with our architecture students yeah. and to work with law students yeah, yeah. Uh, that's where we're moving towards mm-hmm. um and uh, in fact we've even created a space like a 7000 fair square foot space oh, wow. called okay. the design thinking lab oh, wow. uh where students can come together huh. and uh, they can work on absolutely anything there's hmm. um, there's tons of whiteboards uh, there are uh, amazing tables and uh, and chairs that students can sit around they can even write on the tables hmm. and uh, they have these mini presentation areas they have all of these spaces and they also have a prototyping area where they can you know make something if they wish to awesome so um our idea is even through spaces right like spaces can be super powerful they mm. can bring together people and and bring out things from people that sure. um th- that typically may not happen in yeah. some other space so yeah. we we are creating these spaces so that we can encourage cross pollination mm. so that we can encourage uh, this kind of a dialogue Insane. so yeah Insane. and uh, we are closely collaborating with every every other department and every other school mm. so all of that happens quite um, quite seamlessly now everyone's nice. uh, you know everyone understands hmm. the importance of what's happening and hmm. uh, and we all collaborate and um, say with marcom and media team even cmr university as a whole right you've got multiple departments and you also have like a marcom team hmm. uh, marketing and communications and you have like the hr team and you have all of this so so we all just uh, you know it's it's i think it's a lot to do with human connection fair 
and it's a lot to do with understanding what what we do <laughs> so uh, i remember we had a session uh, a, a day long session nice. where every every department kind of uh, came up and spoke about what's happening <laughs> you know <laughs> like we had placements come and talk to us about the statistics hey what's happening with the students what's nice. happening with placements what's <laughs> happening with uh, uh, you know uh, what are the what are the reasons that students are are making it mm. and what are some of the reasons what are, where are where are our students not uh, that strong Fair. what do we need to focus on nice, so nice, that nice. is information that is useful for faculty all over absolutely because right? you know the kind of caliber of students that you're going to be dealing with and everything which is nice yeah That's and awesome. we also understand what uh, you know what what's happening outside hmm. and and then we've got our common core curriculum department come and talk to everybody about mm -hmm. hey what are we doing yeah and um, and then we've got different uh, different departments come up and talk about these things especially departments that work with the entire university mm -hmm. so i think uh, making space and making room mm -hmm. for everyone to learn about each other uh, to build that kind of human connection mm -hmm. And um, I think everything at, at the end it just boils down to that um, to that human connection. Like when you when you know someone yeah. and when you trust them, yeah. and when yeah. you know them well, you reach out to them. Absolutely, understood. As a design thinker, mm -hmm. uh, I'm imagining I'm I'm imagining one of these sessions, like one of these one day sessions. Now, if I had mm -hmm. to put it towards a product, let's mm -hmm. uh, let's stick with the backpack for now, just for a, for the sake of this example. Sure. Is there um, certain strategies that you implement with the team? Is there certain things that you do to get the creative juices flowing? Or what mm -hmm. is how do you get that process? So if you're going, if you're all going to sit down and discuss this bag and how you're going to make best out come out of this bag, mm -hmm. the same way that you're going to talk to the finance person is not going to be the same way that you talk to HR or marketing. Yeah. So how, what is what is that the skill set the what is the skill set required to get everyone to think about the same problem? Is there a certain mm -hmm. skill set that you use? Is there a certain psychology that you use? Mm -hmm. That's that's interesting to me. So I'm curious okay. to know how you go about that. All right. So there are um, there is a process. Hmm. The design thinking it's called the design thinking process. There are different steps. Like you, you first understand the problem. You empathize yeah. uh, with your end users, and then you define what that problem is, and then you ideate and you come up with a whole bunch of ideas about hmm. how you could solve that problem. And then you prototype and see what works, and hmm. then you test it out and you see if it's working. Yeah. So this is the it's a it's, it's, a, it's a standard uh, five step process. Uh, there are uh, you know people look at it as three steps some people look at it as five steps some people look at it as 10 steps but oh, essentially hmm. the process is about problem finding and then problem solving hmm. uh, before you you know just jump straight to problem solving okay. so if you're if if i would be in a space with a bunch of people in a, with a with a bunch of people looking to um, solve a problem or redesign something we would start with first understanding what, the uh, what is, is what the problem is sure. so we would as a team we would probably decide hey let's let's do some research mm -hmm. let's um, let's go check out uh, how people are using this yeah. are they comfortable let's let's conduct some interviews let's have some discussions with people mm -hmm. um, let's uh, you know let's let's just observe and uh, and let's do some case studies and then you just you first you gather information mm -hmm. um, without thinking about what your solution can be without mm -hmm. thinking about the end goal just gather information just for the sake of understanding the problem understood so and everybody comes to the table with uh, you know what they've gathered understood, understood and now let's process that information nice and understand you know what are all the is there a pattern that we're seeing mm -hmm. is there something that's standing out mm -hmm. uh, is there you know what is what is the real problem mm -hmm. So that's a that's a really interesting discussion. It, yeah, it definitely sounds like it is because it's it, it's yeah. it's simplicity, but it's excellent at the same time because you're yeah. you're just basically taking every ounce of brain power that you have and committing it to one problem at a time. So if you're looking at all of the problems, get all of the everyone to find every problem about the bag. Look at every alternative for this. Everything. So I mm -hmm. I can completely resonate with that. I like that. I really like that. So thank you, thank you. <laughs> that was a great insight. Thank you. So, um, yeah. with this being said, is there anything in design thinking that keeps you going back for more? Is there any s sort of sessions that you're like, oh, I can't wait for this kind of a session tomorrow. I can't mm -hmm. wait to have this conversation tomorrow. I can't wait to work on this particular task tomorrow. Is there any sort of callback like that for you that you have with your job? Absolutely. I think um, it's like over the last three years, it's still pretty new, right? Mm -hmm. With with uh, 
setting this up mm. of course it's been there in the past as well but as part of the department of common core curriculum and having it for all departments that's mm. been there for 3 years, years in our university yeah. so it's it's been constantly exciting because in the beginning we started off with building the curriculum mm. and you know executing that with for students across all streams mm. then we came up with design thinking day mm. um this is like an annual day where we celebrate problem solving where we showcase student work mm. and uh, do all of that so just putting together a a, a huge event this this last year mm. um it was it was really huge mm. um we called it cause 2023 nice uh so that is because you are working towards a cause mm. and uh, cause can be used in so many ways so we just named it cause mm. because we were also working with um, the united nations sustainable development goals incredible and uh, getting students to work towards those problems so we we just created a global open innovation challenge hmm. we had uh, we had we had like 10 different countries participate in wow. our university's challenge wait and what kind of and products were they creating just like out, out, out of curiosity what won what won that entire competition okay so you would be very fascinated to know this we opened out this challenge hmm. to not just university students but hmm. also to school students awesome. so we had students from 5th grade uh, all the way up <laughs> to masters all competing on the same platform incredible incredible so because we believe huh. that innovation is universal this holds bad yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. this 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 uh, so we just opened it out hmm. and a uh, fifth grade team won a fifth grade team won yeah that is wild <laughs> the fifth grade team won and uh, they were uh, go algae they were uh, um you know they were all about looking at how algae can mm. be used in different ways to deal with uh, pollution Insane. so that's that's what they had come up with so that we've had a- Yeah. Here I'm sitting with my 26-year-old mind, <laughs> still not, still not able to identify what algae is and what moss is. <laughs> These guys are creating sustainable products. Insane. Yeah. Why? So, so I think it's yeah. it's incredible that you know. all of these things that we're talking about are all and all of these products that are created are things that have been created in CMR University. I'm mm-hmm. I'm not wrong wrong in saying that at all, right? Um, some of these products that I've spoken about okay. are like, for example, the school. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is uh, Ikea School uh, won the uh, first place. Understood. So Understood. Ikea School is also part <laughs> of the CMR group uh, of institutions, and um, and uh, I think some of the products that I had mentioned right now, hmm. some of them are from CMR, some of them are from other universities that participated fair, with fair. us. But it so, would not have been possible without CMR University hosting this competition, this design day. Yeah, this design yeah. thinking day is an exclusive property of CMR University. Incredible, and, and, and that's that, and that's what I'm saying is incredible because I don't see that in traditional colleges anymore. I mean, mm-hmm. um, I I was a part of the festing community, but the the innovation lacked so much of what's happening today. I mean, obviously, different times, different eras. Even the past three years are extremely different. But now mm-hmm. that we have a place in India where you have these kind of opportunities to find sustainable products, you have Uh, you have a platform for everyone to come and showcase their creativity and their innovation is incredible honestly and i can definitely say that with the hopes of what ai and india can do together the future and in cmr mm-hmm. i think i think we're sorted i think india is in a really really good place and it does definitely have to do because of this design thinking course just over 3 years 3 uh-huh. years down the line 30 years down the line i just i have a lot of hope with what's to come from this particular course so thank you thank you thank so much you. all right vindya so if you had to choose one of the many quotes from our wall to leave with with our audience which one would it be i think i'm going to go with uh, make your own path make your own path this oh. one make your own path yes perfect all right there you have it ladies yeah. and gentlemen that has been our conversation with miss Vindya Omapati thank you so much for being a part of this conversation <laughs> thank you thank you so much for having me here it was wonderful talking to you